Okay, so I just finished phase four, and I thought I would give another update to how my game's going. I just eclipsed 205 hours. Um, I may be a little overly meticulous, but that's how I'd rather play the game. So I'm over here in the eastern swamp, and what I'm looking at is what I call Mega Factory 1. It is making electromagnetic control rods, cooling systems, fused modular frames, batteries, and heat sinks. Um, I am standing on top of a building that is taking in all this copper ore over here and turning it into copper powder that's also going out with my exports over here for the mega factory. This big building on the left is all the iron that's needed, is making all the iron ingots needed to supply this factory. Jump down over here. So over here, uh, I've got a series of refineries that's making all the rubber and plastic needed for the mega factory. And in that little orange building there is making all the concrete and quick wire for the mega factory. Uh, up here is a nitrogen pipeline going all the way out there. And then below it is coal and sulfur coming in. The coal is going over here to uh, an aluminum processing area. And the sulfur is going into the top for making the batteries. This building down here is making copper ingots for the mega factory. And that, that building over there is what's making the aluminum ingots. This building over here, I'll come to next, but I kind of like that it's looming in the distance, is the supercomputer factory. I had used the full window frame for it, and when I was in there, I thought it was too much glass. But on the outside of it, it looks pretty cool. And I had switched to the framed window over here, but I think for the next buildings I'm going to build, I'm going to stick to that, that full glass window, just because I think that's really cool looking from a distance anyways. Yeah, so there's the coal and sulfur coming in. You can see the sulfur is getting dumped into the loading area for this factory. The, s the coal's going out to aluminum. I'll hop down here. So this this layout is pretty similar to to my adaptive control unit factory that I built. Um, all the inputs are kind of down here and, and just kind of going up to where they're needed. Build some stairs over here. Got a water pump down here that's taking it all the way to the top floor where it's needed. Um, something I I sort of figured out serendipitously when I was making the supercomputer factory was I'm putting these beams up and I'm running all of my power along these beams, and that's how I am powering all these machines. I think it's a much cleaner look. So. You got copper ingots coming in, aluminum ingots coming in. Here's some iron ingots. And they're all making all the crap they need to make down here. This floor is just constructors. Next floor up is all the assemblers. And I've got all of these little individual logistics floors going up, grabbing whatever items on that floor, so this first floor is the iron plate, screws, steel pipes, etc. So we're going up to feed all of these machines. Um, any of the items starting on this floor, they need to go up a floor to go to machines on the floor above. We're going out this left wall. And I do have one thing coming out here for final load deliveries going out this back wall. Um, what is that? Electromagnetic control rods. That's my copper powder coming in, also going to the top floor. I have the drone port up on the roof for sending stuff back to my main base. This floor is so big, I needed a couple of <laughs> a couple of stairwells to get all the way up to the next floor. Kind of the same deal here with the manufacturers. Didn't need as much coming in, so just one floor up here, but. We got batteries going out. Um, that's sulfur coming in up there. Other stuff coming in from the side that was made on the floors below.
plenty of the top floor is the two blenders needed. So got nitrogen gas in this orange pipeline, water is in the blue. Pretty much all I try to color code my pipes as much as I can. I pretty much always use blue for water. Orange I normally just use for fuel, but the only other color that makes sense for nitrogen gas is white, and I already use that for alumina, so I, I figured I'd know the difference between nitrogen and alumina. So, yeah, heat sinks are coming up here from the side. Anything that's needed to make the cooling system goes over here, but anything else gets overflowed to a smart splitter that goes back up to the top for export. And this one's making fused modular frames. We've got one right there. Has the heavy modular frames coming in for it. And just a door out to the nitrogen pipeline going. Probably far enough, I probably should have trucked it in, but oh well. And finally, one last half stairway up to the roof. So everything is coming up the back wall here and it's getting fed down into here and then to export at the drone port for a while I just let the batteries go in you know it's fueling the drones but also anything that wasn't needed for the drones was just kept going straight forward but after I had enough back at main base I decided I was gonna set up a second drone port over here and I built another one kind of in the middle of the map and that's going to be kind of like a battery depot, so I can send drones out to put batteries wherever they're needed. So yeah, that's that's what I've done with this swamp. I'll start making my way over to this supercomputer factory now. Also, blowing up a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the stuff in this swamp. This swamp kind of sucks to work in. And all of my conveyor buses that had all this extra stuff, I was going to enclose in glass like this. I did it for the copper and iron ingots, but then I just kind of got lazy and didn't finish it for everything else. Get up on that power tower over there. There's the view of the swamp as we get away from it. Here's my supercomputer factory. All of these trains are just... I needed so much plastic for this factory. That's seven train stations, or seven freight lines. Um, the first one is just for exports, and all the rest are for plastic. Everything else for this factory I have coming in from nearby. Uh, let's see if I can make it up here. Okay, yeah. So here's copper ore coming in. Going up into... I, I kind of think about for every 200-ish per minute or so of a resource I need, it gets its own resource container. So I have Damn near 600 copper coming in there, so it's getting split into three different ones. Kind of the same here for all the iron coming in. And then I've got much more than that Katerium coming in as well. But all the Katerium and iron's coming in from over here with these big trees. Make sure I'm not going to get run over. Okay. And the, the supercomputer factory is pretty, pretty similar to, to what I did with my adaptive control unit factory. I mean, you can kind of see I've, I've sort of settled on a method that works for me that I enjoy. So you just kind of keep going up the floors and things get more complicated. So all this smelting is happening on this floor. Something I decided to do with the, uh, the mega factory I just built was to have the smelting done off-site and bring ingots directly to the factory. And I think that's good. That, you know, 
that's a whole floor you don't have to deal with here in the factory on on premises. But this is yeah. Here's the the beams with all the power. This is where I figured that out. I feel like I improved upon that in the mega factory. Yeah, just wiring cable. Kind of repetitive, but I'll poke my head in all these floors. Copper sheet, quick wire, so pretty much all your copper constructors in this room. Circuit boards, NAI limiters, so I think this is mostly the, the assemblers. I'm kind of doing the same thing up here. All the, I mean, this floor is just entirely plastic. Look at all this plastic I need to make all these circuit boards. It's That's why I have six freight cars bringing in plastic over here. This floor is just making computers. All these assemblers just to make computers to send up top. A lot of cable, a lot of more plastic, more circuit boards. last floor with final assembly, so we're making high-speed connectors. See a couple there. Better than going into the final assembler making supercomputers. And then any high-speed connectors that aren't needed are then overflowed and merged back with the supercomputers and sent back down for export. Over here towards the north, they built this really long radio control unit factory. Instead of kind of building up, I just kind of built out in a length, and then I built a road, and it's just one little uh, factory cart will come and bring all the radio control units out here. And then it, it gets put on with the same train as the supercomputers and high-speed connectors, and gets sent back to base. I don't have roof access here, so I just have to fall to the bottom. There's the truck station, there's the factory cart showing up and apparently toppling over, but getting itself sorted again. It is really freaking out, wow. Okay. But dropping off radio control units. I will build myself an explorer here just to drive out here. When you're only using a factory cart, you can build a road this narrow and it's fine, but it's a bit cumbersome for anything bigger than a factory cart. So that up there is making encased industrial beams and I think some extra iron plate. That's all going to the dimensioner uploader. Really, really like the dimensional uploader in 1.0 they added. And just kind of crash over the barrier. Yeah, it's good enough. So here's just the the one really long factory I built. This is I built this before the mega factory, um, but this is kind of where I was like, this would be a little less dumb if I made the ingots off-site. So all the ingots are made off-site and then brought here. 
just all the stuff, except for the aluminum. I'm smelting the aluminum here. I guess I lied. Sorry. Um, I know I have another door out here somewhere. I just gotta find it. There it is. Kind of the same deal. I got a loading dock slash logistics floor going on down here. And that's a road up there where I'm bringing in alumina from the other side of the map. The aluminum scrap is coming in right there. And then that silica, this is before I had the alt to just make pure aluminum ingots, but aluminum scrap plus the silica is getting combined in the foundry here to make aluminum ingots, but otherwise got more plastic coming in. Copper ingots there, iron ingots are getting made in this facility right here. Copper ingots are getting made right over there. And then this is uh, another little depot I made right there in the foreground to make items to go in the dimensional uploader. I like how the Explorer makes engine noises even when you've put batteries in it. So yeah, I think that's making iron plates and I think just a lot of iron plates and duffing them into two separate uploaders. When you start making a lot of foundations all at once, it, you can pretty easily drain the, the dimensional uploaders. So I'll drive my way back towards my base. There's a lot out here in the Dune Desert I haven't grabbed yet, so my, my first order of business in Phase 5 is making a turbo motor factory. And I'm using enough alt recipes for it that I don't need any copper, but that means I need to source like 3,000 iron ore per second, and I, I'm hoping that I can get enough out here in the desert to be able to do that. As part of that, I also need to make more plastic, but then uh, I haven't been making any black powder. Oh, that's the first time I hit a creature with a vehicle. That's fun. Um, just got that achievement. Um, and another, for good measure. Um, I haven't been making black powder. I haven't been making smokeless powder. So I'm going to make those along with the plastic. Um, then I'm going to turn it into, turn the rest of the residue into fuel, then turn the fuel into turbo fuel, and then turn the turbo fuel into rocket fuel, and then package the rocket fuel to use for the, uh, for the jetpack. That is another facility I built to just upload stuff to the dimensional uploader, so that's making iron plates, iron rods, screws, wire, cable, concrete, all to get uploaded. At this point, I should work on getting back up here. I'll put a platform on this one. So I'm coming up underneath now my original quartz factory. I might have shown that in my last video, I might have just alluded to it, but that's where I'm coming underneath. That is my drone from my mega factory going to drop stuff back off at base. Uh, this is another factory I made to more, more concrete and drop it into uploaders. 
wanted to get up here specifically because to my right here, any moment you'll see a plant that I made. There it is. It's making turbo fuel and feeding generators with turbo fuel. So there's a train line going into it to bring it sulfur and coal to make compacted coal so that you can make the turbo fuel. Coming back to my primary base now, not a lot has changed here. I've paved over the top a little bit more as best as I can, try to hide some of the spaghetti underneath. Um, my storage facility's gotten a little longer, but it's still basically the same. And my, uh, this is my battery backup building. It has 344 batteries in it. Um, it had just 60 and it was only out to about here. And then I just kind of built all this in here. And I just kind of filled the space I had available here. Put as many, uh, put as many batteries in as I could fit. I could maybe cram more in here if I wanted to. But I don't really want to. Alien Augmenter over there. Blueprint Maker. Got two train lines that come in here to drop stuff off at, at my main base. Uh, that's a facility I built over there to make crystal oscillators. I'm not sure if that was here last video or not. Built another drone port kind of right next to this train station so that it could drop stuff off as well. So that's copper powder coming in from it. We'll head back out the other way. Built that particle accelerator just to make some stuff by hand, specifically the nuclear pasta for phase four. Considering I need a thousand for phase five, I need to automate that. That's still the same uh, coal factory. There's also my first aluminum factories over there too. This is the adaptive control unit factory that I built and showed in the last video. This Katerium factory was there as well. Headed out over towards the west where I'm going to end this tour with some oil stuff I got going over there. Yeah, so this is the train line. It's grabbing copper and coal for... Um, What is this for? That's a great question. I don't remember at this point. Oh well. <laughs> you just kind of keep building and you kind of forget about the stuff you already made. This is a, a road that's grabbing coal from over there and the truck is bringing it down here for an aluminum factory that I have down here. That's where the bauxite's getting mined to go down to the aluminum factory that I kind of attached to my oil nonsense that I've got going down here. So a lot of this over here is just making oil, or I'm making plastic and rubber. Um, but then these specifically are just making heavy oil residue to turn into a power factory. So this is either 16 or 20 refiners. It looks like 16. Um, but it's this whole thing made 30 gigawatts of power. <laughs> and you can see, you know, my max consumption is just shy of 28, but I use around 20, but I'm making upwards of 47. I have a couple of geysers connected now with geothermal generators, so. My power production is a little variable because of that, but you know, this is all making heavy oil residue. I'm sinking the, res the uh, resin that comes with it. Gets put into tanks. The tanks then go into these blenders. You mix residue with water and you get fuel. So this is enough blenders to create this many generators. I think it is... 16, maybe 20 generators per line. So this added 30 gigawatts of power, which again, I'm still not using. 
And every time I have to make more rubber or more plastic, I just keep turning it, all the residue, into fuel. I keep making more generators. I'm not sure at this rate if I'm even going to bother making anything nuclear. I'm not sure I see the point just yet, but I'm guessing something in those phase five parts is going to force me to make something nuclear. And this is the other side that this is my second aluminum plant I built, so it's just making aluminum scrap and it's getting picked up by a truck and it's going back out to what I showed you guys earlier with the radio control unit. So yeah, that's where I am at the end of phase four here. So next I'm I've got to make a turbo motor factory because it seems like a lot of the stuff at this level of the game needs turbo motors. Um, I'm also going to use that as an opportunity to kind of fill in the gaps with, you know, black powder, smokeless powder. I kind of see a lot of this down here being turned into that. So still got oil down here. I got coal down here. I got sulfur down here. I've got bauxite not terribly far away. So this whole southwest or almost direct south part of the game on the map is going to be just some enormous facility that will then feed some factory somewhere. I'm probably going to have to take all of the iron nodes that are left in the desert to get all the iron I need to make turbo motors and then we'll see what happens from there. So when I get to endgame I'll, I'll show off where I ended up. See you guys then.